If you ever owned Luna, Luna Classic, or used UST on Anchor Mirror protocols to get 20% APY on your algorithmic stablecoin, this could be the single most important video for you to watch. In this video, I'll be talking to you guys about the USTC repegged white paper that was published a couple of days ago. I've said this before, for Luna Classic to go back to where it was, we need to have the USTC repeg or at least attempt a USTC repeg look for utility. That was the unique selling point for Luna Classic. So in this video guys, I'll be taking you through the white paper, take out the key important bits that you need to know and at the end of the video guys, I'll be sharing with you my thoughts on this repeg proposal. This is a really important time we're seeing Bitcoin breakout guys. If we can get this USTC repeg narrative going, our bags of Luna Classic could do really well in the bull market. Bitcoin breaking out guys, this is the time to capitalize on a repeg proposal. So if you enjoy the content guys, do hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for 25k subscribers. I have restarted my channel. I've been mainly focusing on Luna Classic content. I do a podcast every week on Twitter space is Sunday and I do a weekly video. This is a special video that I'm making just because of the USDC repeg because it's so important for Luna Classic. If you want to support this guys do hit that like button subscribe and just comment USTC. The more people that watches this video the more chance of Luna Classic going up. Also, if you want to support me, go buy some jewels on Terraport. Go use the Terra Casino guys. They're also a big supporters of the channel. And Juris is the pro uh, project that I'm part of as well. We could potentially play a part in the USTC repeg. And Terra Casino can play a part as well because they're burning um, uh, Luna Classic, Cat with Hat, Luna Classic meme coins, potentially support USTC as well. So guys, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So I'm going to read the abstract because I think it's important. Then I'll take out the key um, uh, sections that I've... Uh, noted uh, whilst I read this uh, white paper. So the abstract guys, collateral market maker that controlled USTC capital flows would create a sovereign unit of account for Terra Classic. The CMM controls capital flows through USTC, through the collateralization ratio, which is the total supply of USTC divided by yield bearing deflationary collateral. The CMM first raises fees to prevent capital outflows under market stress as measured by high volumes. If the outflows continue until CR is under the swap ratio, the CMM locks until the CR is above the reboot ratio. This will all be clear when I... Um, Take you through the details guys but i wanted to read the abstract out for you guys once the cr is above the mint ratio ustc is minted for five purposes per a purchase and burning of lunk so if this repeg is successful there will be lots of lunk burns rewards to terra classic validators yield to ustc stakers yield to usty stakers purchasing and burning of USTY and I'll explain to you what USTY is. In order to reboot USTC safely, all existing USTC automatically swapped to USTY. The CMM will gradually bring USTY back to $1 floor. So that's the goal guys. So the I'm going to take you through this, uh, the white paper now. And I've also put some questions down, guys, that I wasn't 100% sure of what this is. What I like this channel is that I'm not a technical expert. I'm more like a casual investor with, you know, five, six years experience in crypto. So I can share with you my thoughts, but the technical stuff, I will hopefully speak to the the author of this, uh, I'm trying to bring him on his spaces and I'll ask these questions to him. So guys, uh, the key bit that I wanted to read out here is the primary recommendation is to replace algorithmic MM for stabilizing the USTC price with a collateral market maker designed to control capital flows. So MM was how uh, UST Luna worked. We're going to change that for collateral market maker and he takes you through all the monetary um details as well so he talks about monetary controls it talks about different nations controlling monetary supply what is money so he's done a lot of research and there's lots of references that's gone into as well this is a good thing about the white paper and i will criticize it slightly again i'm fully support this i love what they're trying to do anyone 
who is supporting Luna Classic, I fully support. But there are some concerns which I'll talk about. But for now, guys, I'm giving them the full benefit of the doubt and supporting this. Lack of collateral causes algorithmic stable coins to enter a death loop where feedback results in the equilibrium price of zero. Switching USTC to a properly designed CMM will protect its long term value. So lack of collateral was an issue for Luna. This will have a collateral and um, um, uh, there will be a protection as well. So almost like a kill switch, that's my understanding. Furthermore, by providing Terra Classic governance with parameters for setting monetary and fiscal policy, the CMM grants governance the flexibility to deal with rapidly changing global economic and regulatory environment. And I think this this is the part I definitely to read out to you guys. My recommendation has three parts. The first, I recommend swap of all existing USTC to USTY. So you'll be creating a new token USTY and then he'll restart USTC at zero. And this is a bit confusing. So what is USTY becoming? Are we having two stable coins in a way? So that is a bit confusing. And when you're changing names, you know, there could be other issues with branding as well. So that is why I've said, you know, this that's I don't know if it's a concern and I'm sure I'll ask him um, these questions to clarify it. But when you bring in a USTY, a new coin, people always get confused. But if you read this again, he's not proposing. He's just rebranding it rather than creating um, a, a completely new stable coin. So currently, USTC does not function as a unit of account. It's too volatile. On a technical level, this swap requires minor changes to the protocol. Swapping USTC to USTY requires no changes to the protocol as it can be done purely by rebranding and renaming tokens represented by the identifier in the code again frag strat uh, redline these are the guys i'll rely on to understand all this a bit more is it you know feasible and it's just not this bit where i'll get their thoughts on there's lots of other things they talk about i'll get like a second more technical opinion and i'll try to share with you share with you in this uh, in in this and future videos all DAP centralized exchanges, blockchain token bridges automatically support this change as there's no alteration to underlying code. Then USTC can be restarted with a supply of zero by adding a new identifier, UUUSTC. Creating this new USTC, guys, could potentially have other issues as well. USTC currently, as we know it, is listed everywhere, which is a big plus. So starting a new one, you know, branding, getting collateralization, getting utility will all be challenges. Secondly, he advises uh, creating this CMM to replace the, the current MM module that we have got under normal um, conditions. Arbitrages can maintain USTC price universally by swapping collateral with CMM. And I am trying to rush this because this is the third time I'm recording this video. Last time I recorded it was above 20 minutes. I'll try to keep this to 15 to 20 minutes. It could be a long video, but it's an important video. So hopefully you guys listen to it till the end. And if you have any questions, do comment below. The CMM will automatically set volume based fees generated revenue under conditions of market stress whilst maintaining low or now fees under normal conditions to maintain USDC's value. So that's how it's going to maintain the value. The CMM will have two features. First, excessive under collateralization. It locks all swaps. Its treasury is back over a reboot parameter. So this is like the kill switch. So, you know, UST was like, you know, trading with algorithmic people trying to arbitrage. This will almost have a kill switch, in my opinion. So it will lock all swaps until treasury is back above. Um, and again, I'll be interested to see how it works. It'd be good to have an example where they say if the price is below this, this is what happens and talk about different scenarios. I think Luna and UST did very well to get publics like myself and I'm probably a bit more informed investor trader I don't want to call myself an expert but you know more like the general public can understand it and start using it Luna was very simple that's why it became the you know the biggest crypto in the world second if excessive collateralization if excessively collateralized it grants freedom to Terra Classic validators to set monetary policies network for minting USTC to be distributed for the for, to the ecosystem actors selected by, by the protocol. Again, I've just uh, made this note, how will it, will it work technically? Uh, Binance thoughts on this as well, like, you know, when you're rebranding stuff, Binance supports us by burning. Um, how will Binance react to this? Um, 
So if it's over collateralized, then uh, we can potentially mint USTC and we can use that USTC to burn uh, Luna Classic, which is uh, bullish and it could potentially give staking rewards for USTY and USTC as well. Again, I'll link this article below and you can read it. I'm trying my best to make it really simple for you guys and give you like an update on in 15. 20 minutes so guys the arbitrage peg stabilization with under collateralization collateralized outflows into treasury when USTC is above a dollar plus the burn percentage so you can see above a dollar it goes into the treasury less than a dollar collateral outflows when USTC is under one dollar minus the burn so that's in a very simple way of how this will work Another key point to make is um, as uh, they really go into the monetary of what is money, how money works, different, you know, inflation. Um, and I've read a lot on Ray Dalio's here when he talks about inflation, interest rates. So I quite like this aspect of it and I recommend you read it. If I read the whole thing, this will probably be a two hour long video. But as a medium of exchange, I think this is an important bit, which, I, which is why I've um, uh, wanted to talk to you about, uh, uh, mention it to you guys, money serves as three primary functions as a medium of exchange, unit of account and store of value. As a medium of exchange, money facilitates transactions, reducing friction of barter systems by providing widely accepted intermediary instruments. USCC will have to or other uh, algorithmic stable coin, collateralized uh, stable coin, algorithmic stable coin. USTC, USTY, whatever we're building needs to have those features. Monetary theory points the way to fix USTC, but it also points us how a revived USTC can reap massive benefits for validators, investors, and traders. I mentioned that earlier. So yeah, they talk about the money supply inflation and they uh, reference a lot of good articles as well. Uh, so if you are interested in crypto and how money works, recommend you go read this yourself again i didn't fully understand this because you know the ustc will become usty and then you'll have a new ustc uh, so i didn't really fully understand this but it's, what he's trying to show is the flow of ustc mints it could go help to lung validators could help to usty stake uh, yields ustc stake yields and you could burn luna classic as well um, all this, it sounds great, but we need to know technically, which I've made a point here, um, how will it work technically? We need, you know, I need confidence from the more technical guys, Strat, Frag saying, or, you know, Genuine Labs, the L1 team saying, yes, we can implement this in, simply in a code and this, this is going to work. Maybe we need to do more analysis, like similar to how uh, Redline and, and the, the L1, the USTC, USTC team were doing a different analysis and scenario planning massive financial models we might have to do all of that for this to give us confidence terra classic must balance its needs to maintain USTC as a stable unit of account uh, with stimulating economic growth via USTC mints so yeah i understand the USTC mint aspect because you know inflation in a way or printing money is what grows and credit you know help this western world become so rich so it is important and uh, this proposal that they've made allows you to do that and you can have all these good use cases so i like the idea of it i also just highlighted this because i love this guy i read his book and i recommend um his books to you guys the next point i want to make by implementing partial capital controls such as minor fees on swaps involving the cmm's treasury terra classic can slightly temper the rigidity of its currency peg this approach not only provides greater flexibility for monetary policy maneuvers but also introduces a calculated degree of randomness into the system and going back to um uh, Nicholas Taleb, Nassim Taleb, he talks about the volatility and uncertainty becoming stronger in response to stress and shock. So I like, you know, you know, we will learn as we go along and, and having the control for almost like a country setting interest rates, printing money. I like the concept of how it could potentially, um, uh, if we can make it work, how the different things we can pump Luna Classic or bring utility into it. Uh, collateral is going to be really important. I mentioned at the start of the video, how are we going to grow the collateral, you know, launching a new coin without that much funding from Wales. We're seeing other projects having huge um, Athena and, you know, potentially Rune launching his own uh, uh, algorithmic stable coin. And we're seeing so many other companies with a lot more millions and billions of dollars behind them. For us, it's going to be very difficult. Um, I'll come. I'll touch on my thoughts at the end of the video. But the the collateral assets are going to be yield bearing cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, and uh, they do share uh, the the uh, the 
collateral assets that they want to have and all this is going to help guys because if the value of BTC, ETH, BNB, LUNC goes up this is going to improve our collateral it's going to make our ecosystem a lot more secure so um i like having collateral is important we saw uh, what happened to luna without the collateral or you know they were trying to buy bitcoin at the end but we saw what happened so over collateralization is going to be important however some portions should be kept in stable coins such as yield bearing usdt to reduce overall uh, volatility of treasury portfolio as money supply increases and um, that's why i touched earlier as well what happens when Bitcoin ETH price goes up? From reading this, it looks like the collateralization is going to be 250%. It is over collateralization. Um, I didn't fully understand the USDC market capitalization of 1 billion, um, but I think that is the assumption. So when USDC is over collateralized with a market collateralization of 1 billion, note that because of impact to central banking monetary policies, the expected return of deflationary assets greatly outweighs a yield earned from staking stable coins. Validators must choose between more stable backing with more USDT. So I don't think that's, it's just an assumption. Um, how much over collateralized is, I'm assuming that is still um, going to be confirmed. But it's good to, you know, it'd be good to talk about different scenarios like, you know, it, USTC is at this price it's got this much in supply the price of the collaterals like Bitcoin dumps 40% what happens in those scenarios I think that will be uh, really uh, helpful for me and I'm assuming for you guys as well again let me know your thoughts guys and uh, what you guys think of this repick and any questions that you may have by leveraging decentralized oracles such as Chainlink, another one of my big bags again i've sort of bet on or potentially looking at a five or six coins but it's mainly obviously luna classic rune Chainlink, and hate bar and potentially i'll be making content on those um coins as well as i become more active on youtube um uh, so yeah, they'll be using Chainlink and guys, most cryptocurrencies use Chainlink. It just needs to uh, find a way for value accrual for Link to go up. In terms of fees, every transaction will uh, in, uh, incur a flat fee of 0.25%. This process allows traders, traders to either burn USTC in exchange for the corresponding collateral or deposit collateral to mint new USTC. And that will have the same collateralization as well for you to mint it. And they do go into a lot more detail uh, about the different collateralization levels. As I'm assuming these are all open to discussions but i think they will need to come with more details of exactly what they're coming out with in the future a prudent default setting might uh, exempt the initial 1 million an hour volume from fees and subsequent impose a search charge of 0.1% for each additional 1 million traded volume within the hour this incremental fee structure effectively caps trading volume providing a safeguarding against extreme market conditions. So if there's lots of, you know, I think that's just a safeguarding uh, thing. And there's going to be key collateralization swap limits or ratios. So that's the ratios that I was uh, explaining earlier. So swap collateralization ratio and reboot collateralization ratio. I think there's a mint uh, uh, ratio as well, which, uh, discussed, which is discussed later on. With default levels set at 95% for swap uh, CR and 110% for reboot CR, uh, CR. These ratios dictate the conditions under which USTC can be exchanged for collateral or when the CMM is locked. So so um, um, when the CR is uh, uh, you know meets these levels, that's when you can you know get collateralization or you can't. So when CR uh, surpass, uh, surpasses the swap CR, users are free to swap USTC. If it doesn't surpass, you can't uh, do it. Um, so CMM enacts a protective lock mechanism until CR naturally rises above the above the reboot CR. So when it is below it, what's going to happen? What's going to be the incentives to buy again? I need to understand all that in my head. It'd be really good, like I said earlier, with examples of this, so it's easier for us to understand. The value of collateral does not fall below the swap CR. For instance, if historical data suggests collateral assets can depreciate by up to 50% uh, from peak to through in the business cycle. So this is where why they're saying the mint CR should be no lower than 90, 190%. So, you know, if you collateralize it, to 100% Bitcoin dumps a lot then it's going to affect with your collateral so the mint CR should be no lower than 190% I think an assumption could be 250% 
so they are sharing some numbers again it's it's a good white paper guys again I, i'm not criticizing it i like what they're doing i'm just saying it could be even better if it was examples worked out for general public to understand in a decentralized DeFi protocol it creates opportunities for strategic use of freshly minted usdc i think it goes back to you know being able to mint usdc gives you massive examples you know benefits of paying yields for usdc usty staking burning loon tokens giving rewards to validators it's just gonna make luna class a much more vibrant um, crypto ecosystem and it's fully decentralized as well that's why you know I think Luna Classic is like a personal battle of mine to make it succeed but if it does succeed with all these handicaps it's just going to make it even better because it's fully decentralized no VC money pumping dumps it is just you know the community that is working on this as the USTC mints occur in response to exceeding the mint uh, CR, a strategic allocation of these newly minted tokens could be directed towards burning USTY, enhancing yield flows for USTY holders. And they also share like a hopium. This is like an influencer type tweet, how much loon can be burned over 10 years, which is good to see. A bit of shilling in there. USTY uh, uh, towards achieving and maintaining a $1 floor, solidifying its role as a dependable tentpole in the decentralized monetary framework for Terra Classic. I wanted to end it like on a hopium, I guess. Uh, and I like uh, the, the the way the sentence has been put together. I do recommend, guys, you read the whole thing. I'm not going to read the conclusion because, again, it gives you a lot of... Um, um, hope I guess like this is going to do this this is going to do that there's a lot of question marks still around it but like I said I fully support this guys I would love to see it happen I would just read the last paragraph the collateralization approach grants Terra Classic a significant opportunity to harness macro trends such as M2 growth to elevate its financial resilience again as told you this is some big words they're putting in making it sound really bullish and i like it guys even though even if we can't repeg uscc a narrative to start the repeg is massively bullish for luna classic and in a bull market this could do really well the ability to mint ustc when collateralization exceeds certain thresholds spotlights terra classics capacity to reinforce its economic foundation aligning monetary supply interventions with broader growth while optimizing for the cantillon, cantillon effect to benefit initial recipients strategically i feel like a politician reading that but some questions guys before i end the video is technical uh, details um of this would be really important stratcore did a post asking that frags asked that as well so it's really important to say technical detail although this is a good start details on the team are they docs what skills they have i think i've seen a post of the leonardo the guy who's written it it'd be really important to find out details on the team how it will be delivered again d uh, utility what utilities are we going to have to grow this you know luna had chai and potentially you know fake money to show utility how are we going to do that with luna classic and ustc uh, how do we grow collateral where's the big money coming coming from to you know help with the collateral and um, there there has been some rumors from the team again i'm giving benefit of the doubt like i said there's been some rumors of some drama within the team and team separation which i don't really want to get into but i've been told that i'm aware of that news and i try to be honest and share with you everything that i know so you guys can make the best decisions with your money uh, and at the end i just want to say i love it like i said i'm fully supporting it i love it even if we can't repay guys if we can get a narrative going uh, for luna classic uh, and usdc that is going to be huge so thank you for watching this video again i've gone slightly over 20 minutes but i think that just covers everything that i wanted to share with you guys there will be a spaces on sunday hopefully we can bring him on so make sure you follow me on twitter make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification button i will be making a weekly luna classic video where i'll be summarizing uh, my thoughts after i've spoken to the team redline and some of the other key people in luna classic and i'll still be making that weekly luna classic video the next couple of days and i'll be posting that podcast here as well so thank you very much if you want to stay up to date make sure you subscribe and go watch the previous video that i did on the weekly luna classic thank you very much